Hi there, everyone. So we're about to get started. My name is Bet, and I'm going to be taking you through today's webinar. So I'll be talking about how to create a scribe and turn that scribe into a video, which you can then share and show to people. We'll look at some of the more technical and creative things that you can do with video scribe as well as we go along. So this webinar should be great for anyone who's new to video scribe and wants to kind of get started with the basics and also anyone who's been using video scribe for a while but kind of wants to go back over the basics of, of how to make a great scribe. So we'll be covering how you can add images and text, how you can move the camera, how we can have animation techniques, use different animation techniques, and how we can add audio and then turn the whole thing into a video. So just before I get started, I'll introduce you to Johnny, who is going to be on the chat box today so he can answer any of your questions. So if you have questions at any point throughout the webinar, just go into that chat box and you can find him there. He'll be there to answer your questions and help out. Cool. So it should be about 45 minutes of me showing you how, what different things we can do with video scribe and creating an example scribe with you. And then that will leave about 15 minutes at the end to go through any questions, which would be useful for me to do a bit of extra demoing or, or kind of go through together. So without further ado, let's get started. I'll just open up video scribe. Awesome. So you should now be able to see my video scribe screen, hopefully. <laughs> um, awesome. So when you first open up video scribe, you'll see this login screen here. And you can just log in with your Sparkle account, email and password and just click the login button. And that will take you straight to the project screen. Oh, it's just, it's showing me this because I've just installed the latest version. Um, cool. So this is the project screen. So the first thing you'll see is all of the scribes that you're currently working on, your recently used ones. So they're ready for you to open them up and pick up where you left off but you can also find any that you've saved into files here if you've been being organized and putting your scribes into different folders. And if you're starting a new scribe, it's this button here. So that's what we'll click now, create a new scribe. And that takes us straight into the edit screen. So in the edit screen, this big white area in the middle is the canvas. So we've started a new scribe, it means we've got a blank canvas and it's in this area here that we're going to add all different images and text and build our scribe. This edit screen you get really familiar with throughout this webinar. We're going to use a lot of the buttons and things on this screen. I won't do a tour of it now. We'll just, we'll get to each bit as and when we need it. Um, so the first of all, we're going to add an element so we can really see how it all starts. So to add a new element, we've got these buttons here. So we've got the add new text button and the add new image button. We'll just start off with an image. So if we click that, it will open up the built-in image library, which we have in Video Scribe. So basically what this library means is that you don't actually have to draw anything. You don't have to have any experience illustrating. You don't have to like your own art or anything like that because we've got all of these ready-made images which you can browse through. They're all organized into folders and we're always adding new image packs and things as well with our design team. So it can be useful to just search for what you're looking for. Today I'm going to make a scribe about space travel just for a fun example scribe. So let's start off with an astronaut. Just type in the search bar and see what we find. Let's go for this one. So when you click on an image in the library, it's going to be added to the canvas. And here we can move it around just by dragging it. We can resize it with the handles in the corners. 
and we can use this rotation handle here as well if we wanted to turn it around. Cool. And once you're happy with your image, you can just play to see how it is going to animate. So we've got this play from start preview button up here. So this is where the real magic of VideoScribe happens. You can just throw anything you like at the canvas and then we'll see how it automatically is animated with a hand. So the default for VideoScribe is always to create a whiteboard animation basically. So that means that you're going to have a hand with a pen drawing on a whiteboard background. But actually we can customize and personalize this. So if you're making a scribe where for that theme or for that message, you actually want it to have a different feel to it. You can change it so it's no longer a whiteboard animation, it's something else. I'll, I'll show you how. So up here, we've got these two options here. So we've got background options and we've got default scribe hands. So with these two, we can actually change the whole theme of the scribe. So I'll go into background options. So instead of it being a whiteboard in the background, I could change it, for example, to be a cork board if I choose like this. So this is where we choose the color in this square here. And these are the textures. So if I choose that, for instance, it turns into a bit of a cork board. Or I could change it into parchment or whatever I felt like. For this one, I'm actually going to do a black board animation. So we'll choose that texture and this dark gray, click the text to turn that into a blackboard. Great. But now that it's a blackboard, if I press play, it's still going to animate my image with a pen as if it was drawing on a whiteboard and that's not what we want anymore. So I can actually personalize that as well by going into the default scribe hand button and that's going to open up our library of different hands that we can use in video scribe. So they're all organized into folders of the different people who we've um, who model their hands for us. So let's look at Daniel here. So for each person they've got lots of different different pens and erasers and hand positions that you might want depending on your scribe and what images and things you're using. So for this scribe, because it's a blackboard animation, we're going to go for some chalk. Be perfect. And we'll just click the tick to confirm that. So now when I press the preview button, we've got a blackboard animation with a hand drawing with chalk. Cool but it's looking a bit empty and boring still as a scribe. So let's go and add some text. So add new text element. What that's gonna do is it's just gonna open up a text box and I can just type my message in. This is just gonna be my title. And you can press the carriage return or enter key just to space your text over multiple lines. And we can also change the font color and alignment of our text. So because I'm doing a blackboard animation, I wanna choose a kind of chalky color. So I just click on that color square and I can change that. These are the alignment options. So I can go for center or aligned on the right or left. And then here is where I change the font. So when you first open up your video scribe, you're not going to have a big list of fonts here like this because you can actually choose which fonts you have imported into your video scribe. And you do that through manage fonts. You can then choose different fonts to import. If you want some more help with importing different fonts, there's actually a, an article on our help pages for inserting fonts as well. So you can have a look at that if you want. So these are just all the fonts which I've imported into my video scribe. I'm going to choose this one and click the tick, just like the image, it's gonna appear on the canvas. And here I can resize it, rotate it, move it around, basically just get it positioned how I want it. Great. So now if I preview, we're gonna have both the image and the text being drawn by our hand that we chose. So you can see how really, really quickly with not very much effort, I can just start chucking elements at the canvas and seeing what I can create. Now we'll get a bit more technical there. Cool. So
So the next thing I'm going to show you is the timeline. So here at the bottom, now that we've added a couple of elements to our scribe, we can see that they appear as icons in the timeline. And the order that they are in the timeline is the order that they're going to be drawn in the scribe. So at the moment we've got the astronaut first and then the text, but it's really easy to change them around if I want to. I can just click on the one I want to move and literally just drag it with my mouse to the position that I want it. So now the text is going to be drawn first and then the astronaut. There's also quite a few settings that you can adjust from the timeline itself if you open this quick menu. It's a really useful way to quickly get to some key settings, for example, timings. So in VideoScribe, every element that you add to your canvas has three timings attached. One of them is the animate time. So that means how long it's actually going to take for that element to be drawn or animated in another way if you, if you change the animation method. But basically, it's how long it's going to take for the element to appear onto the canvas in your scribe. The pause time is how long it, the camera is then going to wait on that element after it's been drawn before moving on to the next element. So it literally is how long your scribe pauses for on that element before moving on. And the transition time is how long it takes for your camera to actually move across to where it's going to draw the next element. So if you start changing that transition time, you're actually changing the pace of movement of the camera in your transition between elements. So for these elements, let's say we'll give two seconds for the text to be written and then one and a half seconds for the astronaut to be drawn. You can also type your number in if you want to click on the number and type in the box and you can go up to 0.1 seconds um, of accuracy. Precision. Cool. Okay. So now that we're happy with those, I'm going to show you how you can save your project because it's really a good idea to keep saving your work as you go. So this button up here is the save button and this is where we can name our scribe. So I'll just call this one space scribe. And this is where you can also choose which folder you want to save it into if you've created some folders with this drop down or you can create a new folder now. So let's call this one webinar and I can choose to save it in that new folder just with the tick. So that tick's just going to save it within VideoScribe on this computer. So it means that when I next open up VideoScribe on that project screen that we started off with, it's going to appear there um, in my recent scribes. But in that same save icon, I could also export it to my files on my computer outside of VideoScribe. So as a .scribe project file, which can only be opened in VideoScribe, but that would mean that I could then send that .scribe file to someone else to pick it up or pick it up on a different computer. So that just saves it outside of VideoScribe on your computer. And this saves a copy to your online scribe. So what that means is that if you log into VideoScribe on a different computer, then you'd be able to get to it from your online scribes as well. Cool. So we've created a little mini scribe <laughs> and saved it. But if we want to start expanding our scribe and building more scenes and making it longer and more complex, this is a point where it's useful for me to show you how to move around the canvas. So if I just zoom out a bit, you'll start to see how much space we've got to work with. The canvas in VideoScribe is actually infinite, so you're never going to run out of space. And you can always move around and expand your project in all different directions um, to really design it however you want it. So if I zoom back in, we'll just move to create a new scene. So I'll just click and drag in a blank space to drag the canvas down. Or if you prefer, you can use the arrow keys to move around the canvas. So I'll move down until I'm in a blank space. And this is where I'll create my next scene. So because I'm making a scribe that's kind of a, a fact scribe about space travel, I want this scene to be like a, a timeline have some space facts. So I'll start off with a line down the middle to be my timeline. So if I go into the add new image button and I'll go into the arrows folder here. So you'll see as I scroll through there's loads of different styles in video scribe so you can 
really make it work for your personalized message or story. And we'll, I'll choose this one. Great. So this is the arrow I want to use, but really I want it to be pointing down so that I can list my facts down my timeline. And also I want it to be a kind of chalky color to, to match with my scribe theme. So what I can do is click on the element, so this arrow here in the timeline, and open up that element properties. So element properties has loads and loads of options for how you can change how each element looks, how it's drawn. Um, we'll go into this quite a lot throughout the webinar. To start off with, we'll just use this drawing options tab here. So under the preview window, there's this flip image icon. So I can click that until the image is facing the way I want. I also want to turn it into my pinky whitey chalky color. So I can change it from being full color in the color effects drop down here to, I could choose grayscale outline. I'm gonna go for silhouette so that I can change the actual color of the element. Because if I choose full color, it's just gonna be whatever color the design team has, um, has made it be. Cool, so in the colors, I can choose the color I want. So it was just in this box here to change the silhouette color. And then, Whilst I'm here, I can also change the same timings which I had um, available to me in the timeline as well. So I can just take that down to maybe one second. The other options we have here are rotation. So if you didn't like using the rotation handle to drag um, images and text around, you can actually rotate them here just by typing in the degrees um, of rotation that you want. And this one here changes the solidity. So if you reduce it, it's going to become more transparent. And if you increase it to 100%, that means fully solid, you wouldn't be able to see anything through it. The reason that's useful is if you wanted to layer images on your canvas, then you might want to have some of them being partially transparent so that you can see the images behind. It's just something for you to play around with. We're not going to use it in this one. So just click the tick to confirm those changes. And there we go. Just make it a bit bigger it down the middle as my timeline. Great. Okay, time to add some facts to my timeline. So I'm going to go to add new text and I'm going to type my first fact. So it's 1961. Oh, so once you've got your text written in, again, we can change the color and everything to make it match our theme and style. It's remembered the font I used last time, so I'll stick with that same one and click the tick. And then we'll just position this where we want it. Be a bit smaller. Great. Cool, so now I'm gonna add my second fact, but I want the font size and, and formatting to perfectly match that first fact so that it looks really consistent and neat. So the best way of doing that is to copy and paste that first text um, element and then change the text to make it into the second one. So I can just click on the text element in the timeline and just copy and paste. So I'm using the Control C, Control the shortcut because I'm using just a Windows PC. Um, and then, so now it's copied and pasted the element on top of itself, so you obviously can't see it on the canvas yet, but if I just use the arrow keys to move the second one to the side, you can see we actually have two of the element now. But I wanna change the text of the second one so that it's my second fact. So I can go into element properties again, so clicking on the second text element in the timeline and opening up element properties. This time we're gonna to go to the edit text tab on the left here. So in here I can actually just completely change the words that are written. So now we're in 1969. 
cool. So again, just using this, the return key or enter key to space the text over multiple lines. And all of my form and is already how I want it, except from I'm just going to change the alignment to be aligned to the right because I'm going to put this fact on the other side of my timeline. Cool. So I click the tick. And then I can just drag that to where I want it. And because I copied and pasted the first element, that tricks basically mean, meant that I have exactly the same font size so it matches the first element, which is great. So this scene is nearly finished now. I think it could just do with an image to make it a bit more exciting and engaging. So we'll just go to add new image and I'll scroll to find the science folder and look for something which is going to go well here. Let's use this solar system image. Really, I want to put it in this corner down here and it's kind of facing the wrong way. So I will open up element properties for this image again and use that same flip icon that we used for the arrow just to turn it round so it's facing the way I want. And I'll do that same silhouette technique so that I can edit the color and make it just a plain silhouetted chalk drawing. Great. I'll also just change it down to two seconds. I think that's all we need for that one. Great. Okay, so I'm happy with this scene now. But now we need to sort out the camera. So by default, you might have noticed that the camera is going to zoom in on each element as it's drawn. So I'll just preview it again to remind us what it looks like by default. So VideoScribe is just going to show each element in the center of the screen as it's drawn, then move on to the next one, zoom in on that, move into the next one, zoom in on that. But sometimes when I'm creating scenes, I actually want to fix set camera positions for different elements. And I can show you how you can do that. So I'll just stop this. So if for the second scene, I want the entire, oops, sorry. I want the entire scene drawn in one camera position. All I need to do is position the screen where I want that camera position to be for the whole screen. So I want it to look like this. And then all I need to do is highlight in the timeline all of the elements that are going to be drawn in this camera position. So all the elements of this scene. So to select multiple things in the timeline, all I need to do is hold down the control key or it will be the command key if you're using an Apple Mac and click on them to multi-select. Now that all of the elements in this scene are selected, I just use this button here to set the camera. Awesome. So now this camera position is set for all of the selected elements. So if I click on the first element in this scene and click play from here, then you can see that the camera is going to stay still whilst we draw the whole scene. But it is a bit slow. <laughs> and the reason for that, the reason for these long pauses, is that I haven't changed the transition time. So each of these elements still has, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to open that. Each of these elements still has a transition time attached, which is the time needed for the camera to move. But the camera is staying still between each of these elements, so it's just an unnecessary pause. So what I'm going to do is between each element within this scene where the camera isn't moving, I'm just going to take the transition time down to zero. For the last element of the scene, so the solar system image here, I'm going to leave there being a transition time because I may well want to create another scene and then I'll want the camera to move, so I want to transition there. Cool. So let's do the same for our first scene so that in this first title scene, we also have the camera set to the position we want. So I'll just zoom in, position it where I want it for the first scene, click on those two elements which are in this scene by holding down the control key, and then I will click the tick to set the camera position to this camera position. And same again, I'm gonna need to go in to the transition time of the first element, so the transition time between these two elements, and take it down to zero because the camera isn't gonna be moving. 
after my astronaut, I still need the transition time because that's when we're going to move down to scene two. So I need some time for the camera to move. I'll just preview that now so that you can see what it looks like now we've set the camera to create the scenes. So scene one draws in this camera position, we move down and then scene two draws in this camera position. Cool. While we're here, I'm just going to pause and show you this zoom at end option. So whilst we're previewing, we have the option to change whether or not our animation is going to zoom out at the end to show our whole project. So by default, that's what VideoScribe does. At the end of your scribe, the camera is going to zoom out to show all of the elements on your canvas. But if you uncheck that, it means that your video will just end on the last camera position of your scribe. So that's what I'll do for this one. Cool. So, now we have two scenes. It's looking pretty good. But at the moment, everything in our whole animation is just being drawn with a hand. But we can actually change that and play about with some different animation techniques, which can work really well for um, enhancing different kind of visuals or suiting different kind of styles and tones of video, depending on what your video is for. So what we're going to do is start off by adding a move in. So move in means that instead of being drawn, an element is actually going to be brought in from the side of the screen. So we'll use that for our astronaut. So to get to our animation method options and change them, we're going to open up element properties again from the timeline. And then we're going to change this drop down. So the animation method drop down here. At the moment it's set to draw, but we can change that to a move in. When we make a move in, we can choose which angle we want the element to move in from, so which side of the screen it's going to appear from. Let's go for, from the bottom corner here. And we can also change the curve of its path, so it can move in a straight line or it can curve in. We'll go for a straight line, that's great. And then we've got the move in effect here, so this is kind of the pace or style of the movement. So smooth has been designed so it kind of fits with the natural movement of a hand. So if you had a hand, kind of open hand, draw, moving in an element, then you might want to use smooth. We've also got uniform, which means that the element's actually going to move at the same pace throughout its movement in from the side. So that just looks a bit robotic because the, camera, the element's just going to move in at a uniform speed. These two, overshoot and bounce, are a bit of fun. So bounce is just what it says on the tin, the element's going to bounce in. So it can be really useful for if you're having an element drop in from the top of the screen and you want it to bounce on the bottom of the screen. Overshoot means the element's going to come in too far and then it's going to come back to the position which you've set. So we'll use that for this one, you can see what that looks like. Cool. And to set that, we're just going to click the tick. So now if I play this, we'll have the text being drawn in and then the element being moved in. But you might have spotted there that we still had the hand shot in with the chalk as if it was kind of throwing the astronaut in. But that's not really what we want for this one. That's not the style I'm going for. I kind of want it to look like the astronaut's just flying in on its own. So I've just gone back into the element properties from the timeline for the astronaut here. And this time I'm going to go to the drawing hand tab here. So this is that same library of VideoScribe hands that you can choose which person and what pen or position you want it in. But now because I'm just in the element properties for the astronaut, when I choose it here, it's going to overwrite the default hand that we chose at the beginning, but just for this element on its own. So what I can actually do is choose no hand at all click the tick, and that's just changed the hand that's selected for this element on its own. So the rest will still have our default chalk hand, and the astronaut is now going to move in with no hand at all. Cool. So I want to show you a few more cool techniques and more technical things you can do with VideoScribe. To do that, I'll just make another quick scene. So let's go pick up back from where we left off. So I'm just going to click on the last element that we put in and go to the camera settings and I'm going to, oh I'm sorry, making noises. Um, 
I'm going to go to the camera settings and I'm going to click the view elements camera position here. When I click on that, it's just going to take me to the camera position which is set for that element. Awesome. So from here, I can just scroll down to find a new space again. The reason I'm scrolling with the arrows is because it will mean it's a really straight, smooth line down when the camera moves. Cool. So this is where I'm going to make my last scene. And for this scene, I'm actually going to import an image. So if I go to the Add New Image Library button here, so this is the image library that we know well now. But you can also import your own image, and that works for SVG, GIF, lots of different file types. Um, and you can import one from your computer with this button, from your files, or from the internet by entering its URL here. If you want some more help and support with this, again, there are some help pages on our website about how you can import different kinds of images. We're just going to import an image which I saved to my computer. So we just click on this one and it should take me to my files. I can just choose my nice picture of Apollo 12 and open it. Perfect, so when you click and select your image to import, it's just gonna load it up in VideoScribe and then it will give us some animation options. So because it's an image which you're bringing into VideoScribe, VideoScribe doesn't necessarily know how to animate it with a hand, how to draw it, because it doesn't know where the lines are to draw, especially when it's a complex image like a photograph like this. So you can still choose to have it drawn or you can have move in. We'll go for draw and then you can choose the style of draw. So sketch would mean that VideoScribe tries to work out where the lines are and tries to guess where they are to draw them. That can work for line drawings that are more simple, but for a photograph or a complex image like this, reveal works much better. Basically that means that we're gonna just, VideoScribe's just gonna have the hand scribble over the image to make it appear. Um, we'll see that in a second. I'll just click the tick to add it to the canvas and pop it in the middle here. Great, and I'll set the camera. So I've got my image selected. I want this camera position, so I can just click the tick and set the camera for this one. Awesome, I can also change the timing. So I just want it to appear maybe in one second. Oh, first, I'll just have it a bit longer so I can show you. So if I just show this element, this is the reveal style, so it's just going to scribble over the top and make the element appear. But for this element, I'm actually going to try out a different animation technique because I want to show you fade in. So fade in basically means that the element's going to appear gradually without any hand at all. So we go back into element properties and from this drop down menu, this time I'm going to select fade in. Uh, take it down to one second animate time and hit the tick. So now when I play the current element, we see it just fades in gently. Good. Awesome. So we're starting to run low on time, but we've still got some of the most important stuff to come. So we've made, we started making a great scribe with some different animation methods, bringing them in here but we don't yet have any sound. So one of the really great parts about VideoScribe is that you can add two types of sound. You can add your soundtrack and your voiceover. So soundtrack is the music in your scribe and your voiceover is your script. It's your person speaking over the top. You don't have to use both of these tracks in all of your scribes, but they can be a really useful way of bringing audio and visuals together to really create an engaging video that's really gonna captivate your audience and get your point across really well. So we'll add both to this one. So let's start off with the music library. So scribe music button up here is how we add our soundtrack. And that's going to open up our library of tracks that we have in video scribe. You can see how calm or heavy the track's going to be by how many square dots it has underneath like this. So more square dots means heavier, less square dots means calmer. I can also see the length of the track on the side here. So 
to help us find the track we want, we can reorder all of the library of tracks. We can sort by long to short, short to long. We can also choose by how calm it is. So we'll sort calm to heavy now because we want a calmer one for this space track. Let's go for a sacred flight maybe. We can just preview it to check it's the one we want. So we press play, hoping that the volume level is going to be okay for you here. It's coming out a bit quiet for me, so I'm just going to bring it up a little bit, but I know it is louder for you. Let me just check your hearing this. I think you might not be hearing that, so I'm just going to reload it so you can hear me previewing. If I just stop and restart that, hopefully you can hear it this time. Oh, sorry, it's loud. <laughs> Just take it down a bit. Um, you can preview any of the tracks that you want here, find the one you want, and then you click on it to select it, and it will appear up here. You can then delete it again if you change your mind. You can also change the volume of the track. So once you've selected your track, you can change, adjust the volume of it here. You can also set it to loop. So if you had a short track, and a long scribe, you might want to make it so that the track loops to fill out your whole scribe. But I think for our little scribe here, we'll be fine without it looped. Cool. Once you're happy, you can press the tick. I'll also just point out to you these buttons here, though. So if you already had a piece of music as an MP3 outside of video scribe that you wanted to bring in as your soundtrack, you could import it as an MP3 from your computer or from an internet URL, just like with the images. So click the tick when you're happy. Then this icon is going to turn blue. That means this scribe now has some music. Next thing we're going to do is add a voiceover. So if we click this button, you can record your voiceover straight into Video Scribe. Um, and as long as this Play Scribe on Record button is ticked here, that means that it's going to Video Scribe is going to show you your scribe in this preview window whilst you're speaking. So you can try and make sure you stay nice and in time and, and with a natural flow of speech with your video. If you've created a voiceover outside of Video Scribe that you want to bring in, just like with the music, you can import it as an MP3 from your computer or from the internet there. Before you start recording, make sure that you have the right microphone selected, so I'll just select my headset microphone. And then this is the bit that everyone always gets nervous about, but never be nervous about recording your own voice because you can always delete, try again. And it's, it's a really powerful part of Scribes to have someone, someone speaking to you whilst, whilst the whiteboard animation is drawing. Cool, so here we go. Once I click record, it's gonna count me down three, two, one, and then it will start recording. So when did humans start exploring space? Well, space travel really got going in 1961 with the first human in space. And then in 1969, the first people stepped onto the moon. Since then, with the Apollo missions and space stations, we've been discovering lots about space, but there's still plenty more to explore. But once you click stop, it's going to process your audio. You've just got to wait for it to finish doing that because if you click off whilst it's doing it, then you won't have your audio. Great. So once it's all ready, you can adjust the volume just like with the music so you can balance them nicely together. You can play it back and check so it when okay. That's going to be loud for you, so maybe I won't do that. Maybe I'll, I'll set my computer volume right down first. So you can play So it when back. did humans start exploring space? Well, space travel, and you could delete it if you're not happy and try again. Awesome. We'll just click the tick to confirm that. So now we've got a scribe with different animation methods, 
with a personalised background and scribe hand and with music and audio. Let's just preview it one last time and then I'll show you how to turn it into a video. And that will that'll probably be it. Cool. There are still way more animation techniques that you can try out and use. So do go and have a look on our tutorials on YouTube and also on our help site um, for different animation methods like Morph, which we haven't had time to go over today. So yeah, do have an explore on our help pages. Let me just preview our scribe we created today one more time. So when did humans start exploring space? Well, space travel really got going in 1961 with the first human in space. And then in 1969, the first people stepped onto the moon. Since then, with the Apollo missions and space stations, we've been discovering lots about space, but there's still plenty more to explore. Okay, so now that we've got a scribe, we want to turn it into a video which we can share or send to people. So the way we do that is with this button up here. So we click that one to publish to a video and we've got a few different options of ways that we can do that. These will look a bit different if you're on free trial to how they will if you're on subscription, you get slightly different options. If you're on subscription, you can also add your own logo as a watermark. So if I just click the add logo button here and select our logo, click open. You can import your logo and it will just be there in the corner of the whole of your scribe. If you change your mind, you can just delete it with the cross. Then I'll just quickly whiz through all of these different publishing options that we have. So with this one, you can publish to PowerPoint. So that's basically going to turn your whole scribe into a video on a PowerPoint slide. So you can then build a presentation around it or add it to a presentation that you already have. It can be really useful. We've also got publish to YouTube here. So that's going to publish it directly to your YouTube channel. You can log into YouTube and choose the name of it. This one here is an extra option available if you're on subscription. It's to share to our online video sharing platform, show.co. So Sparkle has this video sharing platform so that you can, if you click on it, you can choose whether you want it to share as public, unlisted or private. So you can have it published onto show.co so only you can see it or only select people that you send a link to can see it. And once you've chosen, you can hit the tick. What show.co was then going to do is it's going to turn your scribe into a video and it will send you an email when that video is ready to be used. And you also get a link here to let you get to it online. The last option here is to create a video file, which is you can then save locally on your computer and do whatever you want with it, share it to social media, whatever you want. So you have some different options of video files that you can use. MOV or WMV are the options that you have if you're on free trial. If you're on subscription, you have some extra options like image sequences. So you can use publishing to image sequences if you then want to bring your video scribe into a different bit of animation software or video software to edit it further. You can also change the quality. So if you're on free trial, you can go up to 640. If you're on subscription, you can go all the way up to 1080, which is full HD, and you can change the frame rate. You get a higher frame rate on subscription as well. Then you can choose the name again, and you can choose where in your files it's going to save your video. And click the tick, and it will just play your video through whilst it turns it into a video file. So that covers everything for us today. Um, I'll just have a look and see what questions you guys might have to finish off. So I seem to have a question here from Amy. We just close this so that we can keep using it. Cancel render. Okay. Can I show how to jump from the last element to the second element and then back? So I think I understand what you mean. If I get this wrong and I explain something different which isn't useful, then, then let me know. So if I want to, if I'm on the last element,
which is this one here. And I want to jump to the second element and then back again. So in my actual video, if I want to move the camera there and back, what I'd need to do is add another element which takes me back to this camera position. So what I would do is I would go back to the camera position of the spaceman here, view camera, view element camera position. Just see, does it seem to be doing that? Come on. Not sure why that's not working. I'll just zoom in. So, if I want to go back to this camera position to show this spaceman again after showing this one, what I'd need to do is add something into this scene. So that could be an invisible element. So it could just be something set to 100% transparent or the same color as the background if I didn't want it to actually show. But maybe for fun, I'll just add in an actual other element. So I could add in a shape, for example. Let's just see what shapes we have here. So I could, for example, circle. I could go back to the astronaut and circle him if I wanted to like highlight the point again in my voiceover, for example. Just put my circle around my astronaut. And I'd set the camera position for this element to be back up here. So tick. This button here, set the camera, is just the same as this one, but it's for this specific element. So now I've added another element to the end, which is its camera position set up here. So that means that after this element is done, if I just play from current element, after the Apollo mission, the space station's going to move into discovering lots up. about space. But to there's the still plenty more to explore. And circle him. So that the circle was just an example. It could be anything or it could be an invisible element. As I, as I said, so, so for example, if I wanted to make an invisible element, I'd just move this over here and I would, oops, set it to 0% solid. Without any hand, because obviously I wouldn't want the hand coming in to draw it because then it wouldn't be invisible. And then if I play from the astronaut, the Apollo mission the camera space station. We've been discovering lots of about space, but there's no element. There's still drawn, plenty so more to going. explore. Go back up to the top. Oh, sorry. I realise I'm still playing very loud. Um, and if I then want to go back to the bottom element again afterwards, which I think is what Amy asked, I would just need to add something else down at the bottom again afterwards. So down with this element, I might then add, I don't know, like a thumbs up or something. I'll put it in the corner. And I'd set the, that one to be down here again in the camera position. So I've got this element's camera position is up there. And this element, its camera position is down here. Basically just means that if I play from here again, the Apollo missions and space stations, move we've up. been discovering lots Back about space, here, but there's still plenty again. more to explore. To the one. And it's adding a thumbs up, but again, I could make that element invisible if I um, wanted it to just move the camera without drawing an element. Does that answer your question? It is a bit, um, yeah, it, basically it depends in what way you want to do it and what you want to be adding as you move the camera. But for every element that you add to your scribe, you can set the camera position so you can really control where you want the camera to be focusing for each part of your scribe. Are there any other questions we've got? Oh, I've been giving you loud, giving your ears a hard time the whole way through. I'm very sorry. <laughs> cool.
cool. So if that's all of your questions, then that's wonderful. And I hope that you guys all found today useful and fun. I wish you all the very best with your scribe creation. If you have missed any bits of the webinar today or you want to look back over them, then we are going to share this online so you can see that there. Yeah, thank you all very much for coming. If you need any other help or support, please do have a look at our help pages and you can always raise a support ticket if we haven't got the answer to your question already there. So thank you for all coming. I'm going to end the webinar now.